name is Gavin Twinney. I'm the CEO of a company called Aeronautsity. One thing I've I, I really enjoyed the MNN conference, but one thing I, I can see a little bit of a fault is that most people are doing, you know, web pages on screens, and that's not what phones are good at. Uh, and that's not even better off using a laptop, okay? The killer application, I'll say this right now, the killer application for mobile learning is voice. And that's something that hasn't been done yet. And we seem to be the only company in the world that are doing this at the moment. So basically how it works is, you call up, you log in using your student number and PIN, you call up basically any a normal phone number, and you interact using your voice. So you enter your student number, and you ask some questions, and you literally leave voicemails for the answers. They're marked later on by a teacher uh, in a web interface, and you can podcast your own answers, you can pod podcast exemplary answers. And um, I can give a quick demo now if you, if you want. Yeah. Um, on the iPhone? On the iPhone. Now, let's stress that we're using the lowest common denominator here. We're using very basic, basic Nokia phone. You know how much I love Nokia's, and um, we're using a very basic phone. I happen to be doing it here on the top of the range phone, but it doesn't have to be so. Hopefully you'll be able to hear this now. Please enter your student ID. And press flash. Please enter your student ID, so do that. And So I've, I've successfully logged in, it tells me there's 10 questions in the exam, and I can start to, start to test by pressing 1, no, 2. Sorry. Okay, so now I'm going to start, to, start the uh, exam now. I can go up with my first question. Okay, so what it's asking me here... Seriously set up a small business. Well, I know, yeah. We're doing. Um, what we're doing here is I've been asked what what's the name of my English teacher, and I can answer this question here as basically as a voicemail. When I'm finished, press hash. Am I happy with my answer? Yes or no? One for yes. So it goes off now and it saves that answer as a WAV file to the server in the background, and that, we can do that with that WAV file whatever we want later on. No, answer is now saved. Question two. Okay, so this can go on all day. You, yeah. you just do, you do different questions on there. But it's a really, really simple idea, and I, and I cannot understand why people are not doing this okay. all over the world. The other option, the only other option, is to do interview based ex exams. And they're a lot oh, more yeah. efficient than that. You're trying to stream people in for 15 minutes to speak to somebody. Yep. You don't even have to ask the question, you just have to listen to the answer. The question will be on the screen yep. as a marketing. And we can make that marketing process very, very, very efficient. In fact, we can podcast all the, all the, the answers if you wanted to, and you can sit at home. Where you are, or sit on the bus with your iPod, and on paper you can mark the kids. Um, it's just a lot more efficient. Even even if it was only as simple as you don't have to ask the question and wait for the for the kid to kind of stutter through a response, it's just way more efficient way of of, of answering of asking these questions and getting answers. For what do you see as being the applications of this particular thing? Is it is it mostly languages, or do you see other applications for it as well? Okay, at the moment, foreign languages or second languages rather. So you have the Irish language, in New South Wales we're going to do some European languages and Japanese. In India we're going to do English. I think English as a secondary, second language in countries like India and China. Massive. It could be a massive market there. All the technology is on a server. We don't even have to give phones out to people. They can use normal landlines, they can use Skype, they can use a phone, a mobile phone. Um, but the other, the other applications for it here is to if you have another exam, let's say you've written an exam and you're an engineering student and your exam is on all sorts of things, but the, t the lecturer at the end of it is going, you know, I'm not sure if Gavin knew enough about bridges here. Okay? So what you do, he does is, I want to ask this guy a few more questions about bridges. So he picks my name out and he goes, uh, civil engineering, he wants to call bridges and structures and, I don't know, whatever it is, whatever it is suspension bridges. I get an SMS saying, You've well done in your exam, but we need to know, we need to know a few more things about you because you call up this number. You call up and you're asked again some questions orally. And instead of having the follow-up interview for your exam, you ask questions. 
And again, it's a very, very efficient way of getting people. You don't have to get, get people into a, into a center to do their exam. They can do this from home and they just have to answer the questions. So we can use uh, voice fingerprinting to make absolutely sure without any doubt whatsoever that it is the person supposed to be. So it means I can't go home and get my brother or my twin brother or whatever it is to do my exam for me.